Welcome back, everyone. Thanks for joining me here today on episode 2490 of the Cabral Concept. We're going to be going over the primary symptoms of hypothyroidism or Hashimoto's. And basically what that means is low thyroid function. So there are so many people walking around right now with what's called functionally low hypothyroidism or low thyroid, and they have all of the symptoms. So we're gonna go through this today, yet they haven't been given a diagnosis. And the reason for that is that in conventional medicine, so all of the wisdom of conventional medicine, what they say is this, if you are between 0.5 and five, essentially, you're considered healthy normal thyroid. When really we know for an optimal thyroid, and again, that's the reversal of all of these symptoms, your thyroid should be between 0.5 and 2, 2.5 at the very highest. So again, it's very easy to test your thyroid right at home. You can do that. But what I'm going to go over though, are the actual symptoms today. Because believe it or not, one out of five women right now are functionally low in thyroid. That means they're gonna be experiencing these symptoms. And for men, it's one out of eight. And so it's becoming more and more prevalent in our society. I have many shows on the underlying root causes of low thyroid and high thyroid, and you're welcome to check those out. So one, you go to stephencabral.com forward slash podcasts, and you can just scroll through the images at the top and just click on the thyroid. In the thyroid podcast, there's somewhere around 40 to 50 podcasts, all free, you're welcome to go through it. Another part I have is how to heal your thyroid. And that's actually a course. That's at stephencabral.com forward slash courses. Totally your call. You do what works best for you. Today, though, let's just make sure your symptoms match up with what might be considered low thyroid. Now, of course, I have to give you that disclaimer. We're not providing any disease diagnosis, no medical treatment plans, medical advice, or medical cures on this podcast. All right, let's get started. And I'm also going to share with you an interesting take. So also an Ayurvedic perspective as to these symptoms with low thyroid as well. So again, hypothyroidism symptoms or Hashimoto's, which is lower thyroid autoimmune as well. All right. So one of the Ayurvedic perspectives on the symptoms of low thyroid is too much what's called dryness. Now, dryness is exhibited by a vata-based perspective, and oftentimes this is actually true. And the reason is because one of the underlying root causes, I'm not going to go through all of them today, is higher levels of stress. So higher levels of cortisol production production, and typically later in the evening. So it's called a dysfunctional diurnal rhythm where the body is producing maybe even normal to low levels of cortisol first thing in the morning, but actually starts to produce higher levels in the evening. And, the, and the, again, nobody tests their uh, cortisol levels in the evening unless you're actually doing at-home lab testing. So why don't I just share this link with you? Um, the link and all of the information are all going to be at stephencabral.com forward slash 2490. And it's called the stress moon and metabolism test. It actually allows you to test deep in your thyroid levels at home, cortisol production, sex hormones like testosterone, progesterone, estrogen, DHEA, and much more, vitamin D, et cetera. But let's, again, let's get back into the symptoms. So dryness perspective in Ayurveda comes down to these things. Dry skin, many people with low thyroid have very dry skin. The next one they have is dry hair, and even what's called like dry nails, brittle nails. So the nails almost look like they're peeling sometimes, or they don't have that lustrous shine to them. That's what your nails should have. And then there's also constipation. Okay, so we've got the thinning hair, right? The thigh, the dry, thin, brittle hair, skin, and nails. That's basically what it's about, all right? Now, the last one, though, is constipation actually internally, and that is with the colon. So when the colon is more dry, kind of the seat of what's called vata, um, there can be a lot of constipation, along with slow bowel motility. I'll get to that in a moment in just the circulation next, uh, but that slow bowel motility can also be from stress as well. All right, so that's the Ayurvedic perspective on the dryness. Just see, do you have dry skin? Do you have um, dry, brittle nails or thinning of the crown of the head of hair as well? Do you have thinning of the outside of the eyebrow, thinning right there as well? Um, and do you have, uh, besides the dry skin, do you have any constipation as well? All right, so the next up is poor circulation or metabolic rate. So in Ayurveda, this is essentially heat or fire, right? So not a lot of movement. So we're getting more sluggishness, which is the kapha-based perspective. All right, so lack of heat 
in the body. It can turn out to look like cold hands and cold feet, sometimes even a cold nose. And so the cold hands and cold feet can show lower metabolic rate. Now, a lot of people think of metabolism only as weight gain. Weight gain is certainly part of metabolism. There's no doubt about it, but actually metabolic rate is all about the thermostat in the body. How much energy is your body consuming? So if there's low movement in the body, low circulation, low energy production, that's low metabolic rate. And the thyroid actually does slow on purpose, believe it or not, uh, in certain circumstances, again, I, I teach that in other shows, that uh, would enable you to burn fewer calories. And that's exactly what happens. So now you have a lower metabolic rate, poor circulation, cold hands, cold feet, and then the weight gain as well that I'll be talking about up in the next category. But it's also slow heart rate. So a lot of people have a slower heart rate and they just feel more sluggish, just in general. And again, like slow to get going in the morning, especially before 11 a.m., that brain fog or that sluggishness and that fatigue. There's also the sensitivity to cold. A lot of people, again, with a poor uh, blood flow through the arms to the capillaries and the fingers and poor blood flow down into the lower extremities into the toes, uh, they can be very sensitive to cold uh, as well. Okay, so the next category, and we're gonna do five total categories, four main ones, then we'll talk about one for kids, uh, is poor fat metabolism. So there are many people who have functionally low thyroid. That means somewhere between, let's say, a two and a half and a four and a half on their TSH. So the thyroid stimulating hormone, you run your TSH, and is it between a two and a half and a four and a half? That's not optimal. If it's above a five, okay, they're gonna give you a diagnosis at a medical office. Um, but understand that your thyroid is not optimal once it starts to get above that two, 2.5, okay? Now, it is also good though to run your free T3, free T4, and TPO antibodies, we do that with that stress mood and metabolism test. But again, you can request that from any doctor you would like. So in terms of poor fat metabolism, again, it goes back to metabolic rate. It really does. So metabolic rate, metabolism, thyroid, they all go together. It is the thermostat of your body. And your hypothalamus inside of your brain tells your pituitary gland inside of your brain, their neighbors, to tell your thyroid, which is right here in the neck, what to do, how to regulate body temperature, how to regulate metabolism, blood flow, fat burning, et cetera. Okay, so the next one I wanna share with you is this, is that a lot of people, all of a sudden they get into their mid 30s or early 40s and they start to get high cholesterol. If you are simply treating cholesterol as a number and not looking at the underlying root causes, it's an issue, it really is. Because sometimes you're never going to be able to fix your cholesterol that's imbalanced, meaning you're more of your oxidized cholesterol, if you don't actually address the thyroid. So if you're not addressing the thyroid, believe it or not, low thyroid can cause elevated levels of cholesterol. Really important to look at that. Poor metabolism through the liver of cholesterol. Uh, I already mentioned this, but weight gain. So if your body is having issues right now with stubborn weight gain, fat loss, keeping the weight off, or really struggling with anything but a really low carb diet to keep the weight off, I would absolutely look at your metabolic rate, and that means your thyroid, all right? The fourth category is sexual dys dysfunction. So um, there can be infertility. So many women in our practice we work with with uh, infertility, meaning a loss of a healthy menstrual cycle. So instead of being in 28 days to maybe 30 days, uh, some months it's 42 days, uh, other months it doesn't come at all, and then it's normal for another month. And so what we look at is healthy levels of estrogen and progesterone, of course, yes, luteinizing hormone, follicostimulating hormone, sure, all of that's great, but you also want to make sure that your uh, vitamin D3 levels in your thyroid are optimal as well. Real important for fertility. For men as well, um, I just did a show on, I believe it was, was it yesterday? Let's just see if it was. It was yesterday, so episode 2489. And that was on male infertility and sexual dysfunction. I didn't mention thyroid necessarily specifically, but really important to look at that because that can absolutely cause um, for men low libido, uh, low mood. It can cause uh, sperm-based issues in, as well. So we, we want to take a look at that just because overall it's looking at inflammation as one of the markers too. And because... If you have poor circulation, if you have imbalanced hormones, if it leads to higher levels of uh, insulin insensitivity, so meaning like the insulin is being released from the pancreas, but it's not getting the glucose into the cells, you're gonna have higher levels of inflammation. So it's important, again, to look at the entire body 
holistically. All right, um, others, I talked about this, low libido with sexual dysfunction. If you have brain fog, if you have low mood, low energy because of low thyroid, the likelihood that your libido is gonna be low is, is pretty high, it really is. Um, and then I talked about the infertility in a regular cycle. So those are the four main parts of uh, hypothyroidism, hypo being low, hypothyroidism symptoms. And a lot of this comes with Hashimoto's as well. Hashimoto's is not radically different than hypothyroidism, except you're also then looking for what is the root cause of the autoimmune issue, not just the lowered metabolic rate with the thyroid, all right? And because um, sometimes the thyroid just needs its proper nutrients, both Hashimoto's, okay, now what's the inflammatory process um, that's part of the autoimmune issue? You can figure that out, no doubt about it. Again, lots of free podcast on that, and then also my thyroid healing course on that as well. All right, the fifth category, I spoke about this before, but there are a lot of children with lower levels of thyroid. Now, it could go back to those nutrient deficiencies that I talked about. Uh, it could even be a process with iron in the body, anemia. There's a lot that goes into it, no doubt about it. But again, you can figure it out without a doubt, uh, but it can also delay growth and puberty. So that's why it's important to look at it uh, with children. If you see children feeling a little bit sluggish, brain fog, trouble concentrating, um, kind of a sallow look to the face. Maybe you see poor growth. You'll want to explore the thyroid. And again, you can do that right at home with an at-home lab test, or you can ask their uh, pediatrician to run those labs as well. Free T3, free T4, TSH is what you want to look at. And if you want to look for antibodies, you'll run the TPO antibodies as well. So I can link up the lab uh, that we use at stephencabral.com forward slash 2490. But always keep in mind, you can run it with your local naturopathic doctor. Um, this can even be run with a pediatrician for children, or you could run it with an integrative health practitioner level two. But just see, you know, do these symptoms line up the dryness, the lack of the metabolic rate and circulation, the higher cholesterol? Maybe not everybody gets that, not, not even uh, the majority. The weight gain, the trouble losing the weight, keeping it off, uh, as well as the sexual dysfunction. So please take all of this into account. And again, I don't want these symptoms to scare you or worry you or you to even label yourself with hypothyroidism or anything like that. I just want you to know that there's always a root cause. I mean, there really is. So now that you know, okay, maybe I'm hypothyroid, you're going to either lab test or you're just going to begin to work on boosting your thyroid naturally. And if you do it naturally, you don't need to worry about all of those side effects that come along with uh, pharmaceuticals, prescriptions, etc. So always do what you feel is best for you and your family. I just want to provide hopefully a little bit of education on the topic for you to then begin to explore in more depth. Hopefully this was helpful. Thanks so much, everyone. And as always, do feel free to share this show with anyone you believe it could serve.